What's one word that describes how skating feels to you? One word that describes how skating feels to me, probably be disconnect. You know, just disconnect and free. You know, separate yourself from everything that's going on. You just go, it's you, it's skates, it's music, and there's nothing else. And it's just, it's almost like blinders. You go around and just, you're not, you don't care about anything else, but being in that spot right there, doing that one thing. And that's, that's kind of like it. It's just turn it on, boom, I'm out of here. Don't bother me, don't talk to me, don't try to, Converse with me because I don't hear you and I don't care right now. So we're talking on a Monday. That's the day after your big skate night. Uh, when does the anticipation for that start? It usually kicks in on the day, the day of, because you already know. You're like anticipating it already. It's like, you know, it's it's kind of like when you uh, you know you have a regular nine to five job and you're working Monday through Friday, and it's like the days come up and you're like, yeah. Friday's here, you're like, all day Friday, all you're thinking about is what you're gonna do Friday night or Saturday, like, yes, it's here. So, you know, your adult nights come up whenever Sunday's our big night, and it's just like, Sunday, you're just, you're just beating the time away, just like waiting, waiting, waiting. Okay, let me just stay busy, so, because I know it's coming up. So it starts kicking in first part of the day, because that's what you're thinking about. Yes, I woke up this morning, but I'm thinking about what's gonna happen tonight, which is gonna be, you know, that 8.30 moment, you're like, yeah, now it's on. <laughs> it's, it's about to go down. Chuck D from Public Enemy said he was a roller skater and talked about that one big song coming on. And everyone kind of leapt up out of their seats and started going crazy. Yeah, you put on Bounce Rock, Skate, you put on Planet Rock came on back in the day. Oh. You put on Planet Rock and the whole place goes just ape shit. You're just like, <laughs> Planet Rock! And like, you could be doing anything and everything. You could be getting a phone number, you could be eating food, you could be like in the line about to go and get your stuff, and you're like, next up. You've been waiting for a half an hour, and all of a sudden Planet Rock comes on, everybody's like, <laughs> they start running out to the floor. You can't miss that, because you're like, you get out there, and then everybody has to be there for the break. It's like, even if you miss the most of the song and you get on there and then the breakdown comes, oh, if you weren't doing your best move at that right there, you, you've lost the whole night. <laughs> your whole night is just ruined. When you hear a song on the radio or whatever, do you think, oh, that'd be a great skate song? There's definitely songs that I like that is not necessarily the skate song, but you can definitely, the song gets better if you hear it and you're like, oh, I could totally roll to this because this right here would just go in. And then you're just thinking of, you know, the venue, the rink, you know, the system inside and then that playing. Yeah, you definitely, um, it definitely changes the dynamic of the, of the song, right? And there's, and there's so many different styles of skating to go with different songs, you know, and that's something that a lot of people don't understand or don't get that geographically where you come from, different songs are gonna hit a different way because you skate different to those songs because of where you come from and where you're, where you're based out of. Because West Coast songs are not the same as what you hear on the East Coast songs. Or, you know, if you hear down south, you know, versus, you know, up in Detroit or Chicago. We talked before about being disconnected, but what about songs you want to hear in a crowd? There's definitely songs that are like a group-oriented feel. That song comes on and you're just, you're vibing with everybody else on there because you know that they're all in that same wavelength. And it's just like... We connect, we're like, yeah, we know this one light. And we're looking at each other like, yeah, look, here it comes, here it comes. And then everybody's like feeding off the other person and they see you. Like last night, we had a prime example of it. The DJ was playing, you know, it was like a slow tempo. Um, and then and then he just, you know, straight cut. And then it went into this boom, this big house jam, like super good, deep, you know, deep house jam. And everybody just goes, oh, and they just start mobbing like this and then he goes Arr! and he cut the song and he went back to a slow song everybody's like what the f is going on what are you and like everybody stopped i mean everybody just like everybody stopped and it's like that song right there is like yeah you go in it in your own mind but when it came on 
everybody just locked. They're just like, oh, shit, yeah. And they, they jumped on it, and then it was on. And as soon as he cut it off, it just, it killed the whole vibe. And everybody's like, oh, come on, man. And, you know, with that song right there, I could put that song on, and, you know, I could vibe to it, and I can get down to it, and it's, and it's a good song. But it's not the same, you know, as it was with everybody there, because the way you move with that song is more like you know group oriented versus like solo okay speaking of solo what's a song maybe an unexpected one that gets you going you get sledgehammer on you probably get peter gabriel sledgehammer i don't give a if somebody's over to stabbing my grandmother grandma you don't have to wait till this song is over because i'm in this zone right now you know i'm just like i'm out of there it's just i'm gone separated it's just i'm gonna get that song in and me and peter are gonna rock and so that song is over, then the rest of the world is going to exist. But back at home when I was living in Seattle, um, my, uh, my friend Josh owned the rink up there. And he's over there um, in, White, in White Center, and the rink is called Southgate. And he was always asking me for songs, like, you know, because he was, has an artistic background, but, you know, he skates and does all kinds of stuff. But he would always ask me, you know, like, hey, what kind of songs do you like? Uh, or I would request a song, and he's like, you really like this song? I'm like, yeah. And then so, you know, he just randomly played it one time and I just went in. He was like, oh my God, you're, you're not joking, <laughs> right? So then, you know, people hear it and they see me skate and they're like, really? And then people start kind of getting into it, getting into it. But it's just the beat itself. Like when you, like right now, like I can hear it and it's like going down the back of my neck and I can feel it on my arms right now. It's like, that song goes on and it's just, it just takes over. I don't know why. I don't know what the connection is. It's never been like one that I grew up skating to all the time, um, you know, cause I'm a seventies kid. So there was all this, you know, early rap and disco and, you know, funk R and B stuff. And I love all that stuff. I still, but for some reason that song, I don't know what it was. I don't know what happened, but that song gets me charged up. I just love it. I love it. It, and, and it doesn't matter you know, how I'm feeling. That song comes on, I'm feeling better instantly. <laughs> You've DJed before, so what's your approach to getting the crowd going? There was always a format that we, you know, that we DJ as. You know, I am my best friend right now, uh, best friend for a long time, my friend Jerry, uh, Jammin' Jerry. Jammin' Jerry Sturstead <laughs> was the guy who was the big DJ at the rink that we skated at as kids. And it was like, we got like super excited. Anytime we would go to the rink, it was like, we'd look in the window, see who's DJ and we're like, yo, Jam and Jerry's in there. And we just knew he was gonna blow the roof off cause he was like, he just loved R&B and loved funk. So we knew that was just gonna be jumping the entire time. And then he kind of taught me the format to DJ and like for a group and a crowd, especially that style. Um, and it was always, you know, you warm people up. You know, you make a, you make a nice little build here, and you build it to this, like, you know, crescendo kind of thing. You're like, up there, and now you're cranking, and then you, you cut it off. You know, everybody's just like, at the height. It's like, oh, yeah, and you're just going, bam, and you drop it. And you bring your slow tone, your slow grooves in. All right, let everybody, like, chill. Let them marinate a little bit, and then you just warm it up again, and you just do, like, this little wave. And then, you know, once you get to, you know, that fever pitch, you just, you, you keep it going. Boom, 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 boom. And then you taper it off a little bit and then you do a hard drop. And then you just, you just kind of keep doing that. So depending on what the crowd's doing, you know, it's going to dictate, you know, how the music goes. But for the most part, when you're skating in the DJ set, you want to keep that, that vibe. You want to keep that energy high as much as possible because people want to, like, get down. They want to groove. They want to be sweating. They want to be, when they leave, they're going to be like, Oh my God, like you're dead. And that's, that's what you want it to be. Let's talk about the shop. Uh, what's the, what about the typical type of person that walks through? What are they looking for? I've had so many people come in that it's all across the board, but yeah, you get random people who are just like, oh yeah, roller skates. I remember those. And the last time they had any association with roller skating was as a kid, you know? So they just see it and then, you know, the nostalgia kicks in like oh yeah people still do that kind of thing um but yeah they'll come in um 
hey, you know what, I've, I'm new to skating, you know, I've always seen it, or I've had friends and relatives that did it, but I never really got into it. But now that I'm older, you know, I kind of thought about trying it out because it looks like it's kind of fun and I can get some fitness out of it or whatever. Um, so yeah, they just come in for just one little thing. They want to try it out. And then next thing you know, they're hooked on it. And, you know, they start seeing the videos. They start seeing the Instagrams and the TikToks and, you know, all the social media side. But then, you know, with, uh, you know, everything that's happened during the pandemic, you know, skating became a huge, huge draw because you just, you had nothing else to do. It was go outside and walk or ride a bike or roller skate and people were all about it. So yeah, people who just never skated, came in, it's like, I didn't realize it was this fun. I didn't realize I'd you know, meet this many people or have this kind of community or whatever, and they stay with it. So then there's all these different avenues you can take from just you know, skating down the bike path you know, with skating in the rinks. You can do speed skating, you can do roller derby, you can do the rhythm, jam style skating. Um, you know, you can do a fitness kind of thing, trail skates, um, skate parks, you know, ramps and everything else. So there's, there's all these different disciplines that you can go with in figure skating, you know, if it's something that, you know, is more to your liking than others. But yeah, it's random people. It's people who haven't, you know, come in. I haven't skated in 30 years, but I want to pick it back up again because I used to do it all the time. Here's my old skates. Can you fix these things up so I can roll again? Or what's the new thing? I had these 35, 40 years ago. What's the new stuff? And they come in and get new stuff. Or they get with someone like, you know, a partner or a friend who is doing it and they want to kind of pick it up. But it's really just all, all walks of life. Random people just come in. It is like, these look cool. Looks like fun. I want to try it. And then other people are like, I want to do this for this reason. I want to do this for that reason. And they just keep coming and keep coming. So apart from supplying the uh, skates and repairs, et cetera, um, can you talk about the role of the shop in building the broader skating community? Yeah, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the roller skating pusher man. You know? <laughs> like, <laughs> the first hit's free. Here you go, try these roller skates out. You might like it. <laughs> there, there's a, I think there is, a, there is definitely a community. Um, you know, I think it, it kind of gives people some kind of a purpose, you know, when they get to go and skate, but it also allows them to be a part of a community they're not familiar with. And, you know, a lot of people just go through daily life just knowing the things that they know all the time, and they're just comfortable with that. It's like, yeah, I go to work, I go here, I go to have my coffee, I go read a book, I, you know, do something basic. But with skating, it's, there's so many different personalities and types that are involved in skating that you wouldn't normal, normally like be involved with or be associated with. And I think that's probably one of the big things that people like, out of, they, they get out of skating is that me and you would never meet on, our, you know, on any other term. But because we're skating, you know, it's all about the skating part even though you're, you're a rocket scientist and, you know, I'm an artist over here and this one's a bartender and I'm a stay at home mom uh, or whatever, you know, those things, that one thing, that one common thing is bringing you all together. And that's part of that community thing. So I, I think it helps, you know, bridge those things together with, with people who normally wouldn't get together. I just want to talk about the different disciplines of skating. Um, how do they interact and, and help each other or not? The different disciplines definitely take on a different personality. Um, you know, yeah, how you skate in Derby uh, isn't necessarily the same as how you skate, you know, in the skate park or here. Everybody has their own particular style of doing things, but um, sometimes those styles don't translate into other disciplines of the skating. Um, when... When I'm doing like, you know, when I first started doing like roller derby, it was just kind of like, it was more of like a job. Cause you know, I got, I got hired for a TV show to come and do, you know, roller derby, you know, like in the late nineties. And I was like, oh, okay. Cause you know, I was a pro, I was a pro blader for, you know, like six years or so um, with K2 back in the, back in the, you know, mid to late nineties. So I did that. Um, but I also still continue to dance and do the rhythm stuff on the blades when people are like, Oh, that's not what you do on blades. You're supposed to do this and you're supposed to be fast and ramps and fitness. And I'm 
jamming out on these things. Um, so, you know, that kind of went back and forth. But with Derby, I use elements of my skating style from, you know, the rink skating to my Derby stuff, which kind of changed a lot of how people saw Derby in general. Because at first it was just Derby, it was just, just go straight and, you know, hit some people and then, you know, go straight and hit some people. Whereas I took elements of my rink skating, being a rink rat and my rhythm and dance skating type stuff into that. So I was doing spins and jukes and hockey stops and plows and all these other things, jumping around and everybody's like, what the heck is all this? Like, this, this is not, this is not the ring. This is not, you know, whatever. But I'm like, yeah, but this is how I skate. This is how I have fun. Like I started playing derby because I just, it was more skating time for me. You know, so everybody's thinking like, yeah, I want to be aggressive and I want to do this and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, that's, it's more skate time. So you can only skate so much during, at the rink because you only get so many sessions. But if I get to play derby, I get to skate more, I get more practices in, I get to roll more. It's a different style, but you know, the rhythm side helped me on my derby side, which pushed my you know, skate career like through the, through the roof. Um, you know, I did speed skating as well, inline speed skating, you know, quad speed skating, you know, skate parks, ramps, X games, stuff like that. Um, all these different, all these different things, but you know it's still all based in you know rink skating. You know being just, you know a rink rat, Tacoma, that's that's just what you did. So what are the the main things or the biggest things that skating's brought to you? The biggest things skating has done for me in general, uh, besides you know, making you really humble, you know from different aspects, different points in your life, from you know highs and lows and. Uh, um, me traveling the world, you know, being a little hood kid from Tacoma, Washington, you know, you never thought about that kind of stuff. Like you see stuff on TV and you're like, ooh, yeah, okay, yeah, you're traveling. We're like, yeah, yeah, whatever. But as soon as I started skating on a higher level and getting like sponsorship things, it like opened up the entire planet. And I never, ever thought I'd be, you know, gone, stamped through three passports from just, I had no more pages. I was, you know, South Africa, I was in Australia, I was in Japan, I was in Korea, I was in Malaysia, you know, I've been all over Europe and Amsterdam and London, Germany, Paris, Martin. you know, you would never think that something like that would open up just from rolling around on some stupid roller skates. Um, but it's, it's helped me get to where I am right now. So, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade it for anything. You know, I'd, my first time out of the country was, you know, because I got sponsored and they're like, hey, we're taking you over here to Amsterdam and you're going to be over in Europe for a month and a half. I'm like, what? I don't even know what Amsterdam is. Like, <laughs> what, is, what is an Amsterdam? You know, so they send you over there and boom, I'm hopping around all over the all over Europe, you know, Paris, Switzerland, Germany, uh, uh, Benelux, you know, Belgium. You're just like. Wow, this is this is crazy, and it's all just from you know people either one who love skating or they want to get to like skating, um, but it was all skating oriented. So that's pretty much what I've been doing the entire time. You know, since I started from the '90s, just traveling here, spreading the skating gospel, whether it's rhythm skating, whether it's roller derby, uh, whether it's you know inline park skating or any kind of any kind of skating like that. It's you know, I try to take it everywhere, but that's that's probably the biggest biggest thing that it's opened up the world, me to see the world, and then to share, you know, my passion for skating with other people, and then you know on the on the creative side as well. You know, I've always been a creative person, so it's allowed me to design and create products for the skate world that people are using, literally all over the planet. Stuff that I've created for different brands and different companies over the past. 20 years now, something like that, 25 years. Are there any other final words of advice or messages you've got for the viewers and listeners? Enjoy skating for what it is. You know, not, not what it's gonna give you or the, what, or the potential that it might have for you, you know, on a financial side or a popularity side or influencer side or anything like that. Just, 
I always want people to just enjoy skating for skating itself. Just enjoy skating. And it doesn't matter what kind you do. It doesn't matter, you know, where you do it or who you do it with. But, you know, I, I'm always trying to get people just to skate just for the enjoyment of skating, not for the enjoyment of accomplishing something or impressing someone or anything like that. You know, because you, you're getting a lot, you know, you're going to have this battle you're going to hear from people all over the place talking about skating now versus back in the day and this and that and whatever else. And, and you know, there's, there are definitely people out there that are skating to impress somebody else or to get eyes on themselves. Like, I do this skating thing, look, right? I'm skating, you know, like that, <laughs> that kind of deal. And me, I'm just like, just, I just want people to just enjoy skating for what skating does for you. Like, in, it sounds kind of cliche, but what it does for you internally inside. Like, that's kind of like, when I go out and skate, I'm just skating because it makes me feel good Period. It's just, I just feel good skating. You know, I don't care if, if there's one person in the rink or there's 500 people in the rink. I'm still skating for that feeling that I get when I skate. And it's not about, you know, what they see or whatever. Um, so I, I would just say, yeah, enjoy skating for, for skating. For nothing other than, you know, it's skating. Skating is every, skating is everything. <laughs>